So we identify heads, uh, we understand that we need to image uh, good heads first. Now we'll get back to these yellow blocks. So as I mentioned to you, read timeout is extremely important, right? So for any drive, when I can see, okay, occasional yellow block, which is the most common scenario, I would stop it, I would get to configuration, okay? And this is fast primary pass. And this is where I read sector timeout, okay? Read timeout, and it by default 300 milliseconds. And what I would do, I would try to, uh, uh, let's say, increase it to 30 seconds, just to see what, what, what will happen. So basically, 30 seconds means we will, we will not apply read sector timeout at it. So we will just wait until the drive responds and see what will happen. Um, so we start imaging, wait until the next block. And uh, as you can see now, these yellow blocks take much longer time, right? And uh, just notice that there is in this, in this status bar, the time here, it actually reflects the longest time it took for the block to, uh, to, to process. So as we can see, this drive takes four seconds to respond with nothing. And if we would take that drive and connect to any software, this is how your imaging process would work. So every single time the software uh, get that bad sector, the software doesn't have capabilities of read sector timeout. No software has that capability. So you would wait for four seconds for nothing, right? And now it's still yellow block, but it just, we are waiting for the drive to respond. So what I, I can do, I can uh, try to set 100 milliseconds and, uh, and go <clears throat> and see. Okay, so now yellow blocks takes, and again, we can refer to this, right? 500 milliseconds, about 500 milliseconds to be processed. Okay, now how we are selecting what would be the right time? Uh, we get back and increase read timeout up to 30 seconds again, and uh, continue imaging and uh, wait for the drive to respond. And we can see, OK, four seconds, it's too much. I am pressing tab. Uh, OK, and here it's good sectors. And we are noticing how long time, how long may take for the good sector to retrieve. And uh, I don't know if you noticed, but the maximum time was uh, 200 milliseconds. So I would set 200 milliseconds for this drive as a read timeout. And the idea behind this, so basically, you are, you are just trying to uh, measure how much time, the maximum time, may, drive for the, may take for the drive to retrieve good areas, the maximum time, OK? And then we know, OK, if it takes more than that time, it's definitely a problem. There is definitely a problem with that area, and you would skip it. See, that's, that's a common sense, right? So you're imaging good area and watching how much time it takes to retrieve block and taking the maximum. For this, for this drive, it was 200 milliseconds. So basically, 200 milliseconds is the maximum time the drive may respond with good sector. And this is, so, in, Another way to look at resector timeout is to think about this as, uh, as, uh, as, as an idea of identify problematic area, okay? So we know if it takes more than 300 milliseconds, 200 milliseconds, it's a problematic area. So we are basically using resector timeout to identify problematic areas to skip them. Okay, so that's kind of another, another you know, way to, to think about this, if you like. <clears throat> so this is how you are finding the read sector timeout. Okay. And, and uh, regarding the block, okay, let's try to continue. So we identify that, okay, that like, it looks like 200 milliseconds is, is a good thing for this drive. So I said 200 milliseconds. And uh, now the second parameter that I said that it has, you have to play with is block size, right? Because we know, okay, now 120, but we don't know how, how many sectors are bad within 120.